Hello, seniors. This is the Ten Commandments of Resume Writing. The other station deals with the, the bad um, ideas associated with resume writing. This deals with what you should do when you're writing a resume. Um, you have the Google Slides presentation accompanying and my little face down here. Um, I'm not going to read word for word the slides. I'll go through them somewhat quickly, but at least this way you can get a verbal and a visual of uh, the information that is being presented to you. Um, get out of your hair. Okay, so first we are going to start with, well, here's the Ten Commandments resume writing. That's Moses throwing down the Ten Commandments, Charlton Heston in the movie, which you don't really need to know. But one, the first commandment, you will write more than one resume targeting each one at a specific audience. So again, if you're applying to more than one job, you're going to have multiple resumes, or at least the summary part right here is going to be different because you are going to tailor that to the specific job that you want. And here would be an example right here. Um, again, someone targeting a job exactly to being a senior account executive. It would be the same thing if you want to be a cashier or you want to show you want that job. You can look at this example more at your leisure. Commandment number two, you will write descriptive bullet points that begin with action verbs. You're not going to use pronoun, pronoun I. You're not going to use to be verbs, was, am, were, been, is, are, being. You want them to be strong, active verbs. Okay, here's a list of those powerful action verbs. And here's also an example you can look at again. You can pause, go back, pause the video, rewind, and look at them more closely. But you're not going to start any of your sentences with pronouns, adjectives, or adverbs. Okay. All you need to write down for this, by the way, is the commandment. Okay. Then you can refer back to this Google slide presentation as needed. Number three, you will quantify your resume to the best of your ability, adding numbers to describe your experience. Okay. So what that means, anytime you can put an actual number to it, that's what quantify means. To put a number to it, it's better. Okay. Than just saying, I spoke about this in the other video as well. Um, instead of just saying, you know, I was a really good, you know, shift leader, I was a really good whatever. If a teacher was doing it, just to say, I helped my students, you could say, I increased their test scores by 30%. And at your time, leisure, if you come back and you click these, you can look at clear examples of these kinds of quantifying um, statements. Number four, you will not include a section about your hobbies and interests. Some people think, this is the case, but quite honestly, nobody cares. Nobody cares. Um, now, if you were doing something, say you're going to be a video game designer, and so you played a million video games, that may be relevant, and that may show up in your skills or your qualifications. But other than something like that where it's directly related, no one cares if you like to, um, you know, cook Japanese food. Unless you're applying as a job as a Japanese chef or something. Anyways, that's the type of things, too. If you just want to show that you're a um, well-rounded person, that could be included in your cover letter. Maybe not so much in the qualifications of your resume. Five, you will not leave any glaring gaps in employment history. Now, you're, you know, young, just coming out of school. You might not have as many jobs on there at all. But if you have lots of jobs and for some reason there was a span, you had a job, had a job, and all of a sudden there was six months where you didn't work, you might not want that showing up in your resume because people, um, employers, potential employers, will wonder, well, what were you doing? Why would nobody hire you? Hire you? Um, so as you progress in your resume writing, um, as you, you know, graduate from college and go on, you want to avoid the employment gaps. That won't apply too much to the resume we're writing now, but it's something you want to keep in mind. Number six, you'll pay attention to professionalism. Okay, don't include your nickname. Okay, uh, like I may point out, you know, somebody in here um, who you probably all know, but I won't call them out by name, calls themselves the chocolate dropper. You don't want that on your resume, okay? Don't include a picture of yourself, okay? This is not a Facebook page, it's a resume. Don't label your saved document like I hate resumes or resumes are stupid. Um, when you save it in your Google Drive, you want a professional name there, okay? Use professional email address. We already talked about that in the previous video, but again, something like Clowns of Fury. Um, it's kind of funny, but you just want your name and some numbers.
Okay. Make sure your resume is saved with your full name and the word resume in it. So again, if an employer, most resumes are going to be submitted digitally or electronically, um, they should be able to see it and read it and know what it is. And very important, be 100%, 100% sure that your contact details are correct. If they can't get a hold of you, they're not going to give you the job. Seven, you will format your resume so that it is aesthetically pleasing and legible, so it looks good. Okay, so again, we talked about these font in the previous video as a don't. Just so again, same thing. We're just kind of going over to so review those. Those are important. I want to go over them twice. Also, do bold, bold your headers. Do italicize your subheaders. Okay, I don't think we'll have a lot of subheaders on um, these particular essays, but you do have that option. And um, you know, create the columns over here. Here's an example of a pretty aesthetically. That just means it looks or sounds good. It's definitely pleasing essay. Not too much junk or color, but it's organized and easy to read. Number eight, you will, this is a big one. You will not lie on your resume. You will get caught. You won't get hired. And it'll make you feel bad, okay? So just don't lie. You know, be honest. If you don't have a lot of experience, don't make something up. Focus on your skills, okay? Whatever the case might be, do not lie. Number nine, you will not repeat bullet points. Okay, now this is just, you know, if under one job, you know, you're sh showing leadership and communication skills, you don't necessarily need to repeat that on a later job. Okay, just keep it fresh and don't be redundant. Don't repeat yourself. And then 10, you will not make any grammar or spelling errors. This is big. You can use Grammarly if you need to. Other suggestions. Um, this all comes from a website, which I'll mention in a second. But, um, you know, things you can do. Run spell check. Have two friends or family members look it over. They might see different things. Maybe have me and Miss Barry look at it, okay? And then look over it yourself, okay? You can see this one here. This is an actual resume where and they put interests, which you should not do, hobbies and interests. But then they said one of their interests was cooking dogs. Most jobs that won't apply, okay? So, if I know I went pretty fast, you can replay this. Um, you can look at the, the Google slide presentation. Go back, make sure you get this down. Look at the examples and whatnot. Um, also, you can go to the website linked here, Resume Genius. Uh, it is very helpful in how you write your resume. Okay. So those are the ten commandments of good resume writing. Learn them, live by them. I'm out.